Hello, and welcome to another episode of Para Norleans, the Paranormal New Orleans podcast, hosted by yours truly, Fat Girl Freestyle. I've been away for a little while, but now I'm feeling better, much more like myself, and I'm happy to return with another creepy and true tale for your listening pleasure. In today's story, we are going to take a little ride on the scary side. Today's tale comes from a young truck driver who we'll call Hank. And Hank decided that he wanted to share his creepy experience with us. So sit back, relax, enjoy. And pay close attention, but also be warned. Hello, my name is Henry, but everybody calls me Hank. I'm Henry Jr., actually, but I haven't spoken to my dad in many years, so I just prefer to be called Hank. I decided to become a truck driver about three years ago after not being able to find anything in the regular workforce that suited my kind of schedule. I am a night owl. I love being awake at night when everybody else is sleeping. When the crowd is gone and the roads are clear. That's the best time for me. I used to find a lot of comfort in the nighttime a lot of peace, time that I would use to just listen to the world and clear my mind. But there's no peace in it for me anymore after this particular experience. I won't give too many details because I don't want this area to be easily identified. A lot of truckers know it. A lonely stretch of highway coming out of Colorado, driving into Texas and headed way down to the deep, deep south. During the day, it's fine, but at night, at night it takes on an eerie presence. And you can just feel the different energies in the air. I had been told by many other truck drivers that this particular stretch of road had some strange things that happened and it would be best if it were traveled during the day. Don't get caught out there at night. But me, being young and dumb, didn't listen. 
Now, I wish I had paid close attention to those old truckers. But hindsight is twenty twenty, as they say. What I saw, continued to see in dreams and I don't want to sound weird, but sometimes even in the daytime, I feel like I catch glimpses of things. But that could just be me and my haunted mind. But one never knows. Going down this stretch of highway is not for the weak. Your mind has to be strong. And I always thought of myself as someone who was strong, but I don't know this whole experience. It's left me feeling different. It was about 10.30 at night when I started my journey to make a delivery. 6 a.m. the next morning. Again, me being young, (laughs) I thought I knew better. I could drive all night, make good time, drop my load off, take a break, still have time to pick up another load, chasing money. It's not always a good thing. So to any young truckers out there, I'm going to tell you, listen to the OGs when they tell you something. So it's about 1030 at night and I'm on my journey. I have my music turned down low because like I said, I like to think when I ride. And I'm just rolling. Every now and then I'll see a pair of headlights coming my way and pass me by. I'm feeling good. I'm feeling refreshed and well rested. And I have to say that because when I start getting into this story, I don't want you to think that there was anything else going on other than me being in my right mind. I'd been driving for about 45 minutes and I'd stopped seeing those headlights on the other side of the highway. The lights along the road were starting to be few and far between, so there was a lot more darkness than there was light. And I'm rolling. And on the side of the road, I catch a glimpse of what looked like a person, but something about it told me that that is not what it was. But I'm trying to make my money, so I don't have time to stop and try to figure out what it was that I saw. About seven miles down, I see the same figure again. 
another 10 miles and I see the same figure again and I'm starting to wonder what's going on. And I thought to myself, it's probably just some deer or some other animal hanging out on the side of the highway while there's no traffic, grazing. Yeah. That's what it was. Some deer just hanging out on the side of the highway. I made it another five miles. My lights illuminate a figure in the road. And like I said, I'm rolling, so it's not like I can stop immediately to avoid hitting whatever this is. It's a big truck. I have to keep going. And my heart starts racing in my chest because I feel like if I hit this thing, whatever it is, a person, an animal, it's not going to make it. And just as I get right up on it and I clench the steering wheel, bracing for the impact, preparing myself to pull to the side, it disappeared. That's right. It disappeared. I shook my head from one side to the other real fast and I clenched my eyes open and closed real quick a few times and I had to check myself. Are you tired? Did you not get enough rest? And before I could continue to question myself, there it was again in the road. But this time it was standing up. And I say it because I could clearly see that it was not a person or an animal. It stood so tall. It was head and shoulders above the grill of my truck. I could tell even from a distance. It was just a black, shapeless thing. And after the shoulders, I couldn't tell where the arms and the torso and the legs were, if it even had any of that. My breath started coming rapidly. This thing was giving me an intense sense of panic. And I gripped the steering wheel so tight, my knuckles bulged, my nails dug into the skin of my palms, and there was no way I was going to try to stop myself from hitting it. When I got close to it, This is going to sound crazy. Nah, it's going to sound insane. When I got close to it, everything on my truck started to shut down. The engine stopped. The lights started to dim. The lights on the inside of the truck went completely out. I couldn't guide the steering wheel. 
I couldn't do anything. And I could hear the tires screeching on the highway as the truck slowed and eventually came to a complete stop. I don't want to look out the windows. I don't want to confront whatever it is. I quickly did a check to make sure that both of my windows were up and the doors were locked. I closed my eyes and just tried to settle my breathing and tell myself that I was just having technical difficulties, that I didn't really see that thing in the road, that my truck didn't just stop all by itself, that whatever strange thing was happening It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. It wasn't happening. And that's what I kept repeating to myself inside my mind. But the feeling, the energy, (sighs) and tried as I might, I could not slow my breathing. I thought I was going to go into a full and complete panic and then I heard it. I heard it running its claws along the side of my truck. Low and slow at first, but I could hear the screeching of the nails along the truck. I was in a full panic at this point and looking around trying to think what to do. Was there some weapon, some Emergency button, something, 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 something other than that thing that was out there. I could hear the metal grinding under its nails. And I say nails because to think it may have had claws is too frightening. The worst part of it all is I could feel the thing getting closer and closer and closer to my driver's side door. I could feel it approaching me and I could feel the hatred. I could feel its need to want to kill me. I had to think fast because pressing the buttons, trying to get the truck to start wasn't working, so I had to do something. I took off my seatbelt. Again, I checked the doors, make sure they were locked. And I jumped in the back. And I just huddled in my bunk. I just I just huddled in my bunk and I 
the scraping, the metal, the nails on the metal, the, the claws on the metal of the truck had me so scared. I just wanted, I just wanted to get out of the truck and just run, but I had nowhere to go. Where was I going to go? It was deserted. No one else was around. And why the hell didn't I listen? Why the hell didn't I listen and stay off of this road? And then I heard tapping on the driver's side window. Tapping like a woman would take her acrylic nails and tap. Tap, tap, tap. And something in my mind, in my head, a voice, something, it, that thing was in my head. And I could hear it saying, open the door. Open the door. open the door and the handle on the door started rattling and the truck started shaking rocking slowly at first and then shaking so hard that I could hear the creaking of the hydraulic springs I braced myself so that I wouldn't fall. And then the other door handle starts shaking. And the truck is rocking from one side to the other. And then tapping on the driver's window, on the passenger side window. It was more than what? More than one? More than one? What? (sighs) And then the most horrifying part of it all was I could hear it climbing on the front of the truck. And I wanted... Something in me wanted to look, wanted to see, wanted to know. And that voice again, open the door. Open the door. Open the door. And again, I just pressed myself even tighter into my bunk in the corner and I took my hands and I covered my ears and I just started saying, go away, go away, go away. And then the tapping again of the nails on the windows. Not just one, not just two, not just three, Several of those things I could hear out there and then the scraping metal of the truck under those claws. And it climbed on top of the truck and it was so heavy I had to look up because I thought it was going to come through the ceiling. It felt strong enough to just peel the top of the truck back and pull me right out. I was a sitting duck for whatever this thing or these things were. And the only thing I could do 
in those moments between <sighs> panicked breaths and being on the verge of complete and utter panicked tears was pray. All I could do was pray. God help me. God help me. God help me. Please. I don't want to die. And the tapping stopped. The scraping stopped. The truck stopped shaking. So I moved just a little bit to see if I could hear anything on the outside, and it was dead quiet. So I took a chance and gave a quick peek out the window, and there was nothing, (laughs) nothing there. I noticed my headlights had come back on. So I moved very slowly into the driver's seat and turned the key to start my ignition. And thank God the truck started right up and I did not hesitate to put it into gear and go. And I drove straight to my destination. I didn't get out of the truck until the sun was well up high in the sky. I needed to see, I needed to know, I needed proof that what happened really happened and that it wasn't just some strange dream. Some weird experience that my mind created. And when I got out of that truck, I saw deep scratches in the metal on my driver's door all the way down the side of the truck. I went to the other side and it was the same thing. Razor sharp. Marks, claws, in the metal. So deep it peeled the paint back. I stood in shock and disbelief, getting flashes in my mind of the thing or things that I saw in the road and one of the other truckers who was getting his truck unloaded comes up to me and he taps me on my shoulder. And he says, you were on that road late last night. And all I could do was stare blankly at him because how?
his response to me was, 20 years ago, when he started driving, he too was stuck on that same road. His truck mysteriously shut down while approaching some dark thing in the highway. He reached into his shirt and he pulled out this weird looking amulet. He said, I have an extra one in my truck. I'm going to give it to you because it will protect you from all those things. That don't just go bump in the night. It can protect you from whatever it is on that road. I asked him if he knew if he had seen, if he could describe, if he... And he put his hand up to let me know to be quiet. You don't give it a name. You don't give it a description. It's just it. And that road belongs to it. That space belongs to it. So the next time you are told, do not let darkness catch you on a particular stretch of highway. You take heed. Because there are things in this world, young man, that you will never, ever understand. I haven't been down that stretch of highway since, and I will, in fact, go three hours out of my way to completely avoid it. There are too many things in this world that defy a full, comprehensive explanation. And I am not one to test the waters. So I am letting you know and all of you young truckers out there who think you know it all. When the truckers tell you, don't let darkness catch you on a particular stretch of highway, you take heed. Well, that was certainly a frightening tale. Don't let darkness catch you on a particular stretch of highway, listeners. And if you happen to see it, make sure that you say a prayer Keep your eyes shut and let it 
bump as much as it wants to in the night. Because there ain't no way you can bump back. This has been Paranoid Leans. Paranormal New Orleans podcast. I want to thank you for listening. Thank you for being here with me. Please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, Fat Girl Freestyle channel. Make sure you share the Paranoid Leans podcast with your friends and family and anyone who enjoys a good, creepy, and true tale. This has been Fat Girl Freestyle. And as always, I love you.